So up to now, um, all of the circuits that we have been dealing with, they didn't have much in the gate, at the gate. We had just assumed that somehow magically we have the biasing circuit, so things are okay. So in this slide and the next two slides, we're going to talk about these three circuits that you see in this slide. And uh, in each slide, we're going to talk about one of them, try to calculate the gain of each of them, and then try to figure out how the biasing circuit is going to affect us. Remember that we added this R1 and R2 to actually bias this point, and we added this capacitor to make sure that the signal, like this V in, is connected to a signal source, right? And uh, the signal is really not affecting the DC point at the gate of my M1 because, well, the signal is supposed to be a very small sinusoidal um, kind of waveform. It's not, it doesn't have any kind of a DC on it. So like if I just directly connect it to the gate, it's going to turn off my transistor because, well, the DC voltage at the gate is going to be just basically on average is going to be zero. So I want to set the DC voltage of the gate for the circuit as basically I know that the V gate DC voltage of V gate is going to be R2 over R1 plus R2 times VDD. And the AC voltage, so I'm going to show it with small letters, the AC voltage of the V gate is simply V signal or Vn, right? So this is how I separated them from each other. But then let's see how does how do these uh, three different circuits are different from each other. And how the biasing circuit is really the biasing circuit that we add to the common source amplifier is going to affect um, our performance in terms of gain, input impedance, or input resistance, and output resistance. We're going to start with the circuit on the left, then with the middle, and then the, the one on the right is simply the same as the circuit on the left uh, in the middle, but then we have added this capacitor here. Okay, so let's start with the circuit on the left. I know that it's a common source with the source degeneration and we have discussed this, but then um, let's actually draw the small signal model just for practice because we haven't uh, had one of these with the biasing circuit. So I'm going to start with the signal. So I'm going to have the V signal in the left. And uh, this is connected to, so C1 is basically capacitor, so it's going to be short circuit in the AC analysis. And then I have R2 to ground and R1 is to VDD, so that's also ground. And that comes to the gate. And I have a big gap here, V gate source. I have the RS here to ground. And I have the GM1 VGS. And then at the output, I'm going to have my RD. Okay. And since this is a common source with degeneration, I decided not to actually include channel length modulation. So that's why I don't have an R0. That's what we agreed with each other. Now, this is my V out. And I know that, well, uh, thinking about this, let's let's write the gain, uh, the, the expression for gain, right? So if I call this V uh, basically gate, right? I know that from our analysis from a uh, common source with degeneration, we know that V out over V in is going to be equal to uh, negative GM over 1 over GM RS times RD. Or if you remember, we had it equal to negative capital GM RD. Okay, but then that's over, sorry, this is over VG. This is when I didn't have anything at the gate. Now that I have it, does it actually make any difference? What is the difference between VG and V signal? So VG is defined as the uh, voltage between this node and ground. V signal is between this node and ground. Well, our knowledge of electrical circuits tells us that those are the same node. So VG is equal to V signal. So my gain is not different. It's not different at all. So therefore, um, gain is equal to that. So nothing has changed in terms of gain. How about the input impedance or input resistance, Rn? Well, it's going to be the resistance seen from here. It used to be infinity because from this point, like from if I looked at from this point to ground, um, it would have been just an open circuit, so it was infinity. Now I have R2 in parallel with R1, 
in parallel with that infinity. And we know that a couple of finite, any finite number in parallel with infinity is going to be that finite number. So it's going to be R1 in parallel with R2. So our input resistance is actually reduced from infinity to R1 in parallel with R2, which tells us that basically if I want a really high uh, input resistance, I have to make sure R1 and R2 are quite high. And that's not going to make cause any problem in terms of the biasing because for biasing this, this node, I only care about the ratio of R2 and R1 plus R2, right? So if I go with a 1 kilo ohm and 1 kilo ohm, I'm going to get uh, VDD divided by 2. If I go with 1 mega ohm and 1 mega ohm, I'm going to get VDD divided by 2. So in terms of like basically increasing the absolute value of R1 and R2, I'm free to increase them as, as, as long as I keep the ratio the same, okay? Um, increasing them has another... Uh, benefit for me and that is basically the current that is the DC current that is flowing through this R1 and then because well this is zero and that is zero that current is actually flowing through R2 as well is basically let's call that I bias the I bias is really let's use capital letters so that we know that we are talking about DC values right so I bias is really VDD divided by R1 plus R2. And this is a current that I always have in this circuit. So I have another motivation to actually increase R1 and R2 to make sure that this current is as small as possible because, well, uh, that current is just going to be wasted. That current, I'm going to always have it, so better be small than large, right? So this tells me that the gain doesn't change, but input impedance does. And in terms of output impedance, R out is going to be, well, I have a common source with degeneration so the output impedance is not going to be any different than um, a normal common source with degeneration so it's going to be rd in parallel with gm r naught rs plus r naught plus rs great so for this circuit at least for the circuit on the left we saw that the adding the biasing circuit didn't change the gain but it did change uh, the input impedance, okay? So now let's move on to the next circuit, which is the one on the middle. Okay, now for this circuit, um, the only thing that has changed is basically I've added this gate resistance. Let's see how it's gonna change things in terms of gain, input impedance, and output impedance. So let's draw the small signal model again. So uh, V, signal or vn i have the rg the capacitor which is a short circuit i have r2 into ground r1 to ground and then from this point forward things are going to be exactly the same right so i'm going to have the gap vgs i'm going to have the current source gm vgs and I'm going to have the RD. At the source, I'm going to have the RS. And that's my V out. Okay, so same as before, I'm going to call this node VG. And I know that V out is equal to negative GM RD over. Um, 1 plus gm rs times vg right last time vg and vn was actually the same thing this time they're not because vg is actually the voltage between this node and ground and v signal is actually the input voltage vn is actually between uh, this node and ground and because i have a resistor here between them i can't call them the same node so i have to find out what is the relationship between them well, finding that relationship is not that difficult because I can see that it's a simple resistive divider. I can say that VG is actually equal to R1 in parallel with R2 over R1 in parallel with R2 plus RG times V signal. Therefore, 
my gain is going to be equal to negative gm rd 1 plus gm rs times r1 in parallel with r2 over r1 in parallel with r2 plus rg okay so my gain changed by this factor which is very similar to the case that we had with uh, when we were talking about BJT circuits and we had something in the, at the base, we had this thing that we called attenuation factor. So it's the same gain, but then um, at the gate, our signal got attenuated a little bit and then moved to, um, to the same amplifier. You can think of this RG as the signal source in internal impedance. This RG could have been just the signal source internal impedance. This tells us that based on this attenuation factor, if I want to make it as close as possible to 1, I can say that I have to make sure that R1 in parallel with R2 is a lot larger than RG. So that's another reason to actually make them uh, as large as possible. So generally you want to go as large as possible with R1 and R2. And the limitation that you have is really depend on depends on the area that they're going to take on the chip. So generally, it, the bigger resistance that you have, the bigger area it's going to take. So at some point, you're going to just say, well, this is enough. More than that, I don't want to spend more silicon area, which is quite expensive, on two simple resistors. And I'm okay with losing a little bit of signal or having a little bit of uh, extra power wasted. Okay, so that's a trade-off kind of a thing that you decide over there. Now, how about Rn? Well, looking at Rn, well, before I had Rn look uh, from here forward, now I have this Rg uh, in the picture. So my Rn is actually looked from here. It's going to be Rg plus, because Rg is in series with the parallel combination of R1 and R2. In terms of R out, same as before. Nothing has changed on the drain side, and uh, whatever is happening at the gate is not really affecting the R out um, of this transistor because it depends on R naught, the resistance in the drain, the resistance in the source, and GM. None of that is actually dependent on the R1 and R2, so R out is not going to change. Okay, last but not least, uh, we're going to talk about the circuit on the right. So compared to the circuit in the middle, the only thing that has been added is this capacitor, right? Um, any, everything else is pretty much the same. So let's draw the small signal circuit again. So I have the V in and uh, connected to the RG. I have R1 parallel with R2. Just trying to summarize everything as make everything as quick as possible. So plus minus VGS. And then on the train side, I'm going to have the RT to ground. So this is my V out. The only difference that I have here is that, well, I have my RS, but I have a capacitor. In the AC analysis, the capacitor becomes short circuit to ground. So that means that this RS is in parallel with the short circuit, so it's gone, right? Anything in parallel with a short it means that like you have a zero in parallel with rs the parallel parallel combination of a zero with a finite number is going to be zero so what did the c2 do it actually made our circuit it actually transformed our common source stage with degeneration to a common source there's no degeneration the source is directly connected to ground so it made our work much simpler because the gain this time is going to be v out i know that it's going to be simply negative gm times rd but then this is v out over vgs right what is vgs well that's the voltage difference between this node and ground well here we had uh, this node and ground and that is that that's our v in so the relationship between VGS and VIN is basically equal to R1 parallel with R2, same attenuation factor that I had for the circuit in the middle. 
therefore my gain is going to be equal to negative gm rd r1 in parallel with r2 r1 in parallel with r2 plus rg in terms of input impedance the same as the middle in terms of output impedance well we have a common source amplifier so the output impedance is going to be simply rd if i have an r naught for this case because lambda because we have a common source with without the generation i can actually consider r naught but then but then for sake of consistency let's not so r out is going to be simply r d the simplest possible r out that we had at the first uh, the first example of a common source amplifier okay